The Hamiltonian of a multi-electron atom is much more complicated than that of the hydrogen atom. It has three components. First, the total kinetic energy of the electrons. Second, the total potential energy between the electrons and the atomic nucleus. And last, the total potential energy between the electrons. Unlike the hydrogen atom, the Schrödinger equation of any multi-electron atom does not have analytical solution. In chemistry, the hydrogen-like orbitals are used to approximate the atomic orbitals of multi-electron atoms. The hydrogen-like orbitals are derived from the exact solutions of the Schrödinger equation for a hydrogen-like atom, that is, one electron and one nucleus. The hydrogen-like orbitals are the same as hydrogen atom orbitals except the influence from the nuclear charge number. The properties of an atom depend on the distribution of electrons in its atomic orbitals, known as the electron configuration of the atom. The study of the electron configurations of atoms could trace back to the discovery of periodic table. The periodic law was recognized as a fundamental discovery in the late 19th century, and it was explained with the discovery of the atomic number, which is the electron number of charge neutral atom. In the early 20th century, it became evident that atoms with even numbers of electrons are more chemically stable than those with odd numbers of electrons. In 1916, Gilbert Lewis stated that, the atom tends to hold eight electrons in any given shell, which he assumed to be typically arranged symmetrically at the eight corners of a cube. In 1919, Irving Langmuir suggested that, the periodic table could be explained, if the electrons in an atom were connected or clustered in such a manner that, certain numbers, for example 2, 8 and 18, of electrons occupy a set of electron shells. The filled shells, which were assumed to be stable, were called closed shells by Bohr in his updated model in 1922. Meanwhile, it was recognized in the early years of quantum mechanics that, the Zeeman effect, in which the spectral lines measured in an external magnetic field split, cannot be predicted with just three quantum numbers for spatial motion. In 1924, Wolfgang Pauli looked for an explanation for those phenomena. He introduced a new quantity, spin, which gives angular momenta to quantum particles. In 1927, using the modern theory of quantum mechanics invented by Schrödinger and Heisenberg, Pauli formalized the theory of spin and emphasized that spin is non-classical and intrinsic property. The numbers of electrons in closed shells can be reduced to the simple rule of one electron per state if the electron states are defined using four quantum numbers, including one about spin. This rule for electrons can be generalized to the Pauli exclusion principle, which states that two or more identical fermions cannot occupy the same quantum state within a quantum system simultaneously. In contrast, classical particles are distinguishable. As for bosons, there is no restriction on the number of particles that occupy the same quantum state. The magnetic dipole moment from spin can be experimentally observed in Stern Gerlach experiment. In the original experiment, silver atoms were sent through a magnetic field varying in z-direction, which deflected them before they struck a detector screen, such as a glass slide. Particles with non-zero magnetic dipole moment are deflected from a straight path due to the magnetic field gradient. The screen reveals discrete points of accumulation, rather than a continuous distribution, owing to their quantized magnetic dipole moments. If the magnetic dipole moments are caused by spatial motion, according to Schrödinger's theory, there will be two L plus one discrete angular momenta in Z direction, thus, an odd number of points. However, silver atoms accumulate at two points. Therefore, the angular momenta of silver atoms are not the result of spatial motion, but a new type of motion, that is, the spins of electrons. The magnitude of the spin angular momentum is determined by the spin quantum number, s, like orbital angular momentum, depends on azimuthal quantum number. Bosons are quantum particles whose spin quantum numbers have integer values. For example, photons are bosons whose spin quantum number is 1. Fermions are quantum particles whose spin quantum numbers have odd half integer values. For example, electrons, protons and neutrons are fermions whose spin quantum number is one half. Accordingly, the magnitudes of the spin angular momentum of all electrons are the same. Since spin quantum number is a fixed property of all electrons, it does not affect the states of electrons and is usually not mentioned. 
The spin magnetic quantum number distinguishes the eigenstates for a given spin quantum number, which are called eigenspinners. It refers to the projection of the spin angular momentum in an arbitrarily chosen direction, conventionally called the z-direction. The spin magnetic quantum number takes values in the range from minus s to s, and the difference between neighboring values is 1. Thus, there are two s plus 1 eigenspinners. In the electron, there are only two eigenspinners for ms equals plus or minus 1 half, which are sometimes called spin up and spin down. In this illustration, the sphere represents the magnitude of spin angular momentum of electron. The cones represent possible orientations of the spin angular momentum vectors. According to Pauli exclusion principle, two electrons cannot occupy the same state. Therefore, if two electrons occupy the same orbital, they must have opposite spins. The Aufbau principle, from the German, meaning building up or construction, formulated by Bohr and Pauli in the early 1920s, is a rule for building up the electronic configuration of atoms and molecules in their ground states. It states that, a maximum of two electrons are put into orbitals in the order of increasing orbital energy. The lowest energy orbitals are filled before electrons are placed in higher energy orbitals. The principle works very well for the ground states of the atoms of the known 118 elements. However, to use the principle, it is necessary to first figure out the order of the energies of the orbitals. In a multi-electron atom, the actual amount of nuclear charge experienced by an electron is the effective nuclear charge. The term effective is used because the shielding effect of negatively charged inner electrons prevents outer electrons from experiencing the full nuclear charge of the nucleus. The electrons that are closest to the nucleus will see nearly all the nuclear charge, but the electrons further away feel less nuclear charge. For instance, lithium nucleus contains three protons. The electron in the 1s orbital, the closest to the nucleus, sees an effective atomic number of 2.69. The electrons in the 2s orbital, which are further from the nucleus, feel an effective atomic number of only 1.27 because of the screening of the nuclear charge by the two inner electrons. Thus, the energy of an orbital depends on the effective nuclear charge felt by the electron and the principal quantum number. Although in hydrogen atom, there is no energy difference between subshells in a shell, this is not true for the other atoms. In multi-electron atoms, the effective nuclear charge of an electron depends on its interactions with other electrons, which depend on its spatial probability distribution. A lower value of azimuthal quantum number, example, 2s orbital, is associated with a lower angular momentum, which penetrates more effectively toward the nucleus, where it is subject to less shielding from the charge of intervening electrons, and has a greater effective nuclear charge. In contrast, a higher value of azimuthal quantum number, example, 2p orbital, is associated with a higher angular momentum, which distributes further from the nucleus, where they are subject to more shielding from the charge of intervening electrons, and has a smaller effective nuclear charge. For example, effective atomic numbers of silicon 2s and 2p subshells are 10.2 and 9.5, respectively. In a shell, the subshell's effective nuclear charges decrease with the azimuthal quantum number. Thus, in a shell, the subshell's energies increase with the azimuthal quantum number. Therefore, the azimuthal quantum number is a determining factor of energy, second only to the principal quantum number. There is some energy crossover from one shell to another. For instance, the 3D subshell has a higher energy than the 4S subshell. The order of subshell energies is given by Madelung's rule. First, the energy of subshells increases in order of increasing value of n plus l. Second, for subshells with the same value of n plus l, the energy of subshells increases in order of increasing value of n. As a result of Aufbau principle and Madelung's rule, order of electron filling can be simply depicted. The orbitals crossed by same red arrow have same n plus l value. The direction of the red arrow indicates the order of orbital filling. The standard notation of the electron configurations of ground state atoms consists of a sequence of subshell labels with the number of electrons assigned to each subshell placed as a superscript. For example, hydrogen has one electron in the 1s subshell, so its electron configuration is written as 1s1. 
Lithium has two electrons in the 1s subshell and one electron in the 2s subshell, so its electron configuration is written as 1s2 2s1. The electron configuration of aluminium, atomic number 13, is written as 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p1. For some atoms, a part of the electron configuration is the same as a noble gas. These electrons are called the core electrons, whose configuration can be abbreviated with the chemical symbol of the noble gas. Boron, for instance, has electron configuration of 1s2 2s2 2p1. It differs from the helium, whose electron configuration is 1s2, only by the presence of the L shell. Thus, the K shell electrons of boron are the core electrons, and their electron configuration is abbreviated with the chemical symbol of helium. The subshells in equivalent to any noble gas form the valence shell. The electrons in the valence shell are called the valence electrons. For example, the valence shell of boron consists of the 2s and 2p subshells. The noble gas symbol may be also redundant, so it can be omitted. Only the electron configuration of the valence shell is essential. Thus, boron's electron configuration can be written as 2s2 2p1. For a given electron configuration, there are two orders of writing the subshells. The first notation follows the order based on the Madelung rule. The second notation groups all orbitals in a shell together. For example, the electron configuration of the titanium ground state can be written as either 4s2 3d2 or 3d2 4s2. Hund's rules refer to a set of rules that Friedrich Hund formulated around 1927, which are used to determine the distribution of electrons in degenerate orbitals. The first rule is especially important in chemistry, where it is often simply referred to as Hund's rule. For a given electron configuration, the state with maximum total spin has the lowest energy. Therefore, the ground state is the state with maximum number of unpaired electrons, which all have the same spin. The orbitals of the subshell are each occupied singly with electrons of same spin before double occupation occurs. A simple explanation of this rule is that, the electrons in such configuration are farthest from each other so that the potential energy between them is minimized. The ground state electron configurations of the first 10 elements are shown in the table. The 1s orbital has the lowest energy, so it is occupied in hydrogen. In helium, the second electron should also occupy the 1s orbital, but it must have different spin from the first one according to the Pauli inclusion principle. In lithium, the third electron should occupy the 2s orbital, because the 1s orbital is full, and the 2s orbital has the lowest energy among the empty orbitals. In boron, the fifth electron occupies one of the 2p orbitals. In carbon, the sixth electron occupies another 2p orbital, and it has the same spin as the fifth electron, according to the Hund's rule. In nitrogen, the seventh electron occupies the remaining 2p orbital, and it has the same spin as the fifth and sixth electrons. In oxygen, fluorine and neon, each of the eighth, ninth and tenth electrons occupies one 2p orbital, and has different spin from the existing electron in the orbital. From potassium to zinc, though the 3d subshell has lower principal quantum number than the 4s subshell, the 4s subshell has lower energy according to Madelung rule. Therefore, the 4s subshell is occupied first. However, there are several exceptions to Madelung rule among the heavier elements, such as chromium and copper. This occurs because the energy gap between the 3d subshell and the next higher 4s subshell is very small, so that the promotion from the 4s subshell to the 3d subshell becomes energetically feasible due to other reasons. The periodic table is a rows and columns arrangement of the chemical elements. It is a graphic formulation of the periodic law, which states that, the properties of the chemical elements exhibit an approximate periodic dependence on their atomic numbers. The table is divided into four roughly rectangular areas called blocks. A block is a set of elements unified by the highest energy subshells with valence electrons according to Madelung rule. The block names are derived from the spectroscopic notations for those subshells. For example, the general valence configuration of the S block is NS1 or NS2. It is on the leftmost side of the conventional periodic table plus helium in the rightmost side. 
The P block is on the right side of the standard periodic table. Their general electronic configuration is from NS2NP1 to NS2NP6. The D block is in the middle of the periodic table. The F block appears as a footnote in a standard table. The rows of the periodic table are called periods. All elements in a period have the same number of electron shells. The period number is the number of the electron shells. For example, period 1 contains hydrogen and helium. Both have one electron shell, the K shell. Period 2 contains eight elements. All of them have two electron shells, the K shell and the L shell, etc. Period 6 contains 32 elements, including the elements from number 57, lanthanum, to number 70, ytterbium, in the F block. Elements from number 57, lanthanum, to number 71, lutetium, are also known as lanthanoids. Lanthanoids, scandium, and yttrium are also known as the rare earth elements. Period 7 contains 32 elements, including the elements from number 89, actinium, to number 102, nobelium, in the F block. Elements from number 89, actinium, to number 103, lorentium, are also known as actinoids. All the elements of period 7 are radioactive. The columns of the periodic table are called groups. All elements in a group have the same electron configuration in their valence shells. Groups are numbered from 1 to 18, according to the numbers of valence electrons, recommended by the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, IUPAC, with the F-block remaining unnumbered. Groups can also be named by their first element, example, the scandium group for group 3. Chemical Abstract Service, CAS, uses Roman numerals followed by either an A if the group was in the S or P block, or a B if the group was in the D block. In addition, groups 8, 9 and 10 used to be treated as one triple size group, known collectively as group 8B. Also, trivial names are common. For example, group 1 except hydrogen is called alkali metals. Group 2 is called alkaline earth metals. Groups 15 to 18 are called nictogens, calcogens, halogens, and noble gases, respectively. Most of the elements in the D block are also known as transition metals because they occupy a transitional zone in properties between the metals of groups 1 and 2 and groups 13 to 16. Group 3 or group 12 are sometimes not counted as transition metals because they do not show the chemical properties characteristic of transition metals as much, for example, multiple oxidation states and colored compounds. As the electron configurations of the valence shells return at regular intervals, the properties of the elements thus exhibit periodic recurrences, hence the name of periodic law. For example, the sizes of atoms are dependent on their valence electrons. They generally decrease from left to right in a period, because when the nuclear charge increases by one, the newly added valence electron is still in the same shell, so the shielding increases by a value lower than one. However, going down a group, the radii generally increase because the outermost valence electrons are in the next shell, whose wave functions are further away from the nucleus. The enthionization energy of an atom refers to the amount of energy required to remove the most loosely bound electron from the atom or the ion having a positive charge number of n-1. For example, the first three ionization energies of magnesium are defined and the values are shown as follows. Comparison of first ionization energies of atoms in the periodic table reveals two periodic trends. First, ionization energy generally increases from left to right within a given period. This results from the valence electron shell experiencing progressively greater effective nuclear charge. Second, ionization energy generally decreases from top to bottom in each group. This results from the valence electron shell being progressively farther from the nucleus, with the addition of one inner shell per period as one moves down the group. The opposite property to ionization energy is electron affinity, which is the energy released when adding an electron to an atom. More energy will be released when an electron affiliates to an atom if it feels stronger pull form the atom, and especially if there is a partially filled valence shell that can accommodate it. Therefore, electron affinity tends to increase down to up and left to right, like the first ionization energy. The exception is the noble gases, which have no partially filled valence shell. 
The additional electrons must go to the next shell with a higher energy, so that their electron affinities are negative. This gives the halogens the highest electron affinities. The trends of the effective nuclear charge and the principal quantum number of the outermost orbital, the atomic radius, the first ionization energy and the electron affinity are summarized in this periodic table. Arrows show increases. Trends in the reactivity of elements such as valence, oxidation state, metallicity and electronegativity of elements all originate from the trends of the atoms.